yeah, welcome once again to the Mask Fan Attic where we look for cool old masks. You know, folks, uh, Universal Pictures, back in the golden age of horror movies, kind of set the standards that would last forever as far as what famous monsters should and would look like. Uh, by which I mean to this very day, uh, ask most people uh, to describe Frankenstein and they're going to think of uh, Frankenstein, the monster, not the doctor, as, uh, you know, a, a tall, green skin, flathead, neck bolts, Frankenstein. Ask them uh, to describe Dracula, they're going to think of Bela Lugosi's uh, mannerisms and the costume that he wore and the way he uh, spoke in the role. And uh, that's true of a lot of the famous monsters. There have been a lot of uh, other versions of Frankenstein and Dracula, but it's the universal ones that, uh, that have stuck in the public consciousness and become the classics, which uh, everybody still knows today. And another such monster was the Phantom of the Opera. Now, there have been a lot of versions of that, too, but the original uh, silent version from Universal in 1925 with makeup by Lon Chaney Sr., it's kind of the classic, and when most people think of the Phantom, even today, they tend to think of him having that living skull kind of look with uh, kind of a blocky forehead and the dark rings under the eyes and the big nostrils and the cheekbones and the big gnarly teeth. And yeah, even though there have been a lot of other versions. Now, um, the idea of a sort of uh, alternate uh, take on the Phantom of the Opera as uh, being a, a guy with a burned up mangled face, more like uh, Batman's uh, enemy Harvey Two-Face uh, than, than a skull-faced freak. Uh, that interpretation of the Phantom has actually been around ever since uh, the 40s when the 1943 version came out with Claude Rains and he played the Phantom as a guy with part of his face burned up and uh, red and uh, scarred with, uh, with acid. However, that particular interpretation of the Phantom didn't really become popular until the success of the Andrew Lloyd Webber stage musical and the movie of that which starred uh, Gerard Butler as the Phantom as the Harvey Two-Face looking Phantom and of course that uh, the play and uh, the movie has as uh, its symbol its icon if you will uh, an image of a half mask that would cover half of the face now what am I leading up to tonight's interesting mask in the mask fan attic is this Phantom of the Opera which is from Horror Sanctum. And uh, this particular version is the Retro Phantom. And by the way, I'm saying retro, that's R-E-T-R-O, as in old school, nostalgic. I'm not saying retro, like when Scooby-Doo is alarmed. I'm saying retro. See, that's a difference. Uh, we'll fix that in the editing. But anyway, uh, this Phantom, I like. It's part of the retro series of um, new takes on famous monsters which came out in 2010, the year we did not make contact. Although there were a lot of nasty flu viruses going around that year, so a lot of people took contact. I didn't catch it, but where was I? Oh yeah, Phantom. Uh, this particular version combines the uh, Cheney Sr. Silent Days classic universal look with some of the later characteristics of some of the other Phantoms, uh, by which I mean one side of his face is all burned up and impinkened. That's a great word, isn't it, that I just made up? That should be in the lexicon, I think. Impinkened. Wouldn't that be good? You know you're going to be using it. That should be like in medical reports. You know, uh, skin was impinkened surrounding the patient's bee sting. Because, it, yeah, never mind. Uh, but this phantom combines a lot of characteristics of the different phantom masks and its, uh, its, it's uh, main theme is to be a retro mask, meaning it's supposed to look like a mask that would have been around years and years and years ago, maybe in the 1970s. And I think it does that very well. I think it captures the fun spirit of masks from back in that age and the creepy, ugly, gnarly look of, ooh, scary, the way the masks were back then. It's kind of like something Don Post or Topstone might have done back in the day, but didn't but this is kind of a throwback. So I like that, and I think this is one of the better throwback Phantoms. Uh, Don Post even did a similar uh, thing. They had a mask in the late 70s called Eric, and he was a guy with one side of the face burned up, and that was uh, well before the uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber version um, made it okay, established that neo-traditionalist Phantom as 
the one half burn face guy like Harvey Dent. Took me a second to think of Harvey Dent there, sorry. Uh, but anyway, I recommend this one. It sold for around $55. Uh, it may still be on uh, the Horror Sanctum Studios website, I don't know. Uh, it says right here, Horror Sanctum Studios, and it says on the back of the neck, HSS, I wonder what that stands for, Retro Eric, E-R-I-K, because Eric was the Phantom's name in the original version. And Eric was the name of, uh, well, a couple of Don Post masks and a couple of the um, various remakes. The uh, Phantom's name was Eric. So, you know what? There's something about guys named Eric. They're, they're just creepy. They scare people. Guys named Eric. I don't know why that is, but uh, there's your recommendation for tonight. The Retro Phantom, Retro Eric from Horace Ankum Studios. And I'm out of here. Go do something else.